safety checks, for example. Um, but we were able, and you know, it's estimated that four to five million lives a year globally are saved because of traditional vaccines. Vaccines are holy grail in medicine, right? You know, in a way, for me, certainly going back to the beginning of 2021, if you say vaccine, next to vaccine, the definition probably should just be safe and effective, right? I'm an advocate for, you know, highlighting the mis manipulations of pharma, but I never once believed at all that a vaccine could do any damage and certainly not no damage to the heart. So that's where I was. That was my mindset at the beginning of 2021. My father, who was a deputy chair, um, uh, the vice president of the BMA in his 70s, general practitioner, again, you know, he, he graduated from Indian medical colleges here. You, all your Indian doctors, you know the, the, how important traditional vaccines have been, right? In saving millions of lives in India, no doubt. And still a big issue, okay? There's no doubt about that. Let's establish that first and foremost. That doesn't mean they're completely safe. No drug is completely safe, right? But their effects have been very, very extensive. I went on Good Morning Britain. Uh, on, the, on the left slide there, you'll see a film director you may know of, Grinda Chadda. I also spent a lot of time, you won't mind me uh, sharing this with you, during lockdown, uh, going for walks, I spent a lot of time with uh, Shaker Kapoor, okay, the film director. I know Shaker very well. Both Gurinda and Shaker, I convinced, I didn't push them, but, you know, they're asking me about the vaccine, etc. So listen, I'm not sure about the efficacy. We know vaccines against coronaviruses are not traditionally very good, but I couldn't conceive of a harm. And of course, let's just get it done. So I went on Good Morning Britain because Gurinda said she had the vaccine because of me. And I didn't demonize unvaccinated people or anything like that. I said, listen, there are rational concerns for people not wanting to have the vaccine. And there are irrational concerns. And I said irrational concerns like microchips part of the vaccine. I know my friend over here may disagree with me, but, you know, I don't certainly think, I didn't think at the time that this was part of any deliberate strategy. We'll, we'll, I'll come on to rational reasons for that later. I know you want to hear this. Uh, I don't think there's a depopulation agenda or whatever, right? But I said that, you know, the rational concerns are genuine. Look at what pharma have done over the last two decades, right? The fraud they've committed. I understand it. But I said, when you look at traditional vaccines, they're one of the safest of all the pharmacological interventions we have in medicine. They're still the safest. And that's how I left it. And then, of course, things changed. July 2021, my father sadly suffered a sudden cardiac death in a very unusual circumstance. He's a very fit guy, you know, amongst his Indian community friends. We don't have a family history of heart disease. He was super fit. He had a mild angina type pain. And within 30 minutes, he's had a sudden cardiac death. I didn't understand what was going on. His things didn't make sense to me. He had critical uh, coronary stenosis. And then a few months later, and at that time, I didn't think the vaccine was implicated. And a few months later, different data started to emerge. First of all, plausible mechanism published in circulation of how the vaccine, mRNA vaccine, accelerates heart disease. So straight away, I'm thinking, OK, this might explain my dad's issue. Then we have data coming in the UK of increased heart attacks. And then I got contacted by a researcher, a very prestigious institution, a cardiologist I know, very high integrity, who was very upset. And I said, what's wrong? He said, Asim, a group of researchers have accidentally found, through use of coronary imaging, that the mRNA vaccine is increasing inflammation of the heart arteries. But they had a meeting and they said, we're not going to publish these findings because it may affect our funding from pharma. Okay. And he was very upset. And I said, OK, well, listen, let me draw the attention to this. So I went on GB News in the UK. I told them this is what I'm going to talk about. This went viral. Behind the scenes, I know Peter's gone through this more than anybody, right? Uh, you know, the attacks happened behind the scenes. One prestigious medical institution, which I won't name now. That story will come out later. And now I'm suddenly an anti-vaxxer. Doctors are making complaints against me. It was, let's investigate this. That's all I said. And that all of that behind the scenes, right? So this is then myself, listen, I can't just be going on Twitter and on TV, right, to start talking about what I think. I need to really critic. And I know Peter was making noise about this well before I came in. And I thought I was listening to Peter. And I thought, OK, let me spend some time critic in the way that people can understand what are the benefits of the vaccine and what are the harms on the best available evidence. And that's what I did. I spent nine months doing that before I published. So that was just the start of my journey. So let's just give you some of the summary findings here. So I went back and looked at the randomized controlled trials. Peter is exactly correct, right? The original trials on the Pfizer vaccine, and by the way, I know COVID shield is a big issue and topic here. We'll come on to COVID shield, don't worry, right? On the Pfizer vaccine, if you look at the original randomized controlled trials, there was no reduction in COVID mortality, right? It didn't reduce COVID mortality. It didn't uh, reduce all-cause mortality. There was a 95% relative risk reduction in infection. 
But when you look at it, it actually were, meant that you had to vaccinate 119 people to prevent one infection from the original wound. And that's if you believe Pfizer, right? That's if you believe Pfizer. Now, what else is interesting in this analysis, just so you know about COVID Shield? So Joseph Freeman did this analysis, okay, the researcher, and he says that the one in 119 figure you can apply effectively to all the other COVID vaccines, Moderna, J&J, COVID Shield, right? So remember this figure, okay? One in 119 prevented from infection. Now, if there are no harms and if that was consistent, fine. Vaccinate billions of people and you'll save millions of lives, right? But that obviously... What else was uh, told to the public? If you have antibodies, and I thought that antibodies like with other vaccines gives you protection. The FDA themselves, it wasn't publicized in the news, but they put it on... They say explicitly in May 2021, basically, um, you know, uh, the public and healthcare providers, the results from currently authorized SARS-CoV-2 antibody tests should not be used to evaluate a person's level of immunity or protection from COVID-19 at any time, and especially after the person has received COVID-19 vaccination. So antibody testing in the blood does not give you any reliable information on prevention of infection or severity, right? I then started to look at data in the UK. Can we give you a rough estimate of benefit of the vaccine? Okay, can you give me an estimate in terms of preventing deaths? Now, I had limited information at the time and the information has evolved. So we looked at 100,000 people vaccinated versus unvaccinated of the Delta variant. So this is the inf in interesting bit. I know it's quite small, so I'll just break it down for you. And by the way, this has evolved. And I said at the time when I published this in the paper, this is likely an exaggeration. But at the moment, this is the information we have last year. You had to vaccinate 230 people over the age of 70 to prevent one COVID death. 520 if you're 70 to 80 and then once you 70 sorry under 60 uh sorry under 70 sorry under 70 you have to then vaccinate tens of thousands of people to prevent one covid death right remember that figure now it's evolved we've got, so this is new i've not given this in any talk only last week our human data million people versus unvaccinated on of hospitalization okay prevention of hospitalization hospitalization from vaccines are you ready this is a benefit for individuals if you're ready, you have to vac two doses of Pfizer 7500 people to prevent one severe hospitalized COVID 5700 if you're 60 to 70 if you're 50 to 60 80 700 and as soon as you get younger than that we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people and by the way this is randomized data so it could be there are all so many factors played in there it could be now right but this gives you some now from real data of the benefits of the vaccine it is very 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 it is very 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 okay and remember the code is like let me just fast forward because I know we're a bit short of time. I don't want to overdo it. Let's look at how and I'm the harms shortly. What about the media, right? The media has a role to play in influencing doctors, members of the public, and even policymakers, right? And the media, um, the how accurate reporting healthcare stories, and this was a public a few years ago, and it showed that in all the stories, most people for accurate reporting of the results of the trials are now let example now some of you may be i've heard this i had a i had a, a debate uh, which was hosted that so some of you may seen a few months ago right and i was against uh, a number of people um who were arguing against me and about how the vaccine so many lives and COVID is causing heart attacks etc this was a headline in the times months ago i was sent this by a doctor who's on side and he said i see my scenes a problem are you sure it's not COVID? This was a headline. Even mild COVID linked to heart disease and strokes. Okay? Is it, do we think that it could be true? But it, So I went to look at the original research on which this headline was based. Public heart. Okay? And the conclusion these. Individuals hospitalized with COVID-19 increased risk of cardiovascular events. So these people are hospitalized during the strain, by the way. And we know 
obesity or heart disease, you're more likely, right? Uh, this was not there in people who, have, who are not hot mild COVID, but what's really interesting, something else. People with mild COVID, they couldn't explain the findings. People with mild COVID had a lower risk of having a heart. So what's going on with the Times headlines there? This is just proper, this is pure propaganda. Pure propaganda. Now, I want to pay here. Why should you listen to a Seymour Hot Torpedo? What about the regulators? That's right. They're supposed to regulate, look at the data rigorously. And we trust the regulators. No, we can't. Before, I want to trust the regulators. I want them to be doing their job properly so people can't spend so much of in this space, right? Time, everything. You know, we trust our authoritative figures so we can have health. But unfortunately, we can't because this investigation they showed most of the major in Western countries around the world were being funded by far. 5% of the funding of the six percent of the funding of the funded by pharma. Light, who was a sociologist, this for a long time, he was quoted, I think this is the most perfect way of describing it. Can we trust? It is the op a trustworthy organization independently in real medicines. They're not rigorous. They're not, they are selective and they will hold data. Patients must appreciate how deep the drug regu regulators cannot be as long as they are captured by industry funding. Okay, let's talk about the break it down. Best available. Joseph Frey, she associated with the BM from Stanford, able to go back to data and re Moderna and Pfizer trials. These led to the approval. Of, uh, uh, what did they found in terms of our one in 800 serious adverse events? But this is more interesting. The original trials during the ancestral strain of the virus, they found in those trials you were more likely to suffer a serious adverse event from the vaccine than you were to be hospitalized with COVID. What does that mean? In my view, that suggests these vaccines should never have been approved for anyone in the beginning. And this is even more, I just found more explicable and shocking. The World Health Organization, when the vaccines were being approved, they endorsed a list, this is in my paper, they endorsed a list of what could go wrong with these vaccines in terms of side effects, right? Anything and everything that can go wrong with the heart is on that list. From cardiac arrest, heart attacks, myocarditis, pericarditis, angina, supraventricular arrhythmias, it's all on that list. Why were doctors not given this list? Doctors around the world who are willfully blind to these harms, to vaccine injuries. In medicine, if you're not, even if a wreck, I remember in medical school, we are taught to learn about some of the rarest conditions that we, but the reason we do this is if we're not aware of the diet, always, even there, give that to the patients to see. So they're aware of this potential harm. This list, it's extraordinary. And they list upon the studies, a platform that was being used, vaccines and even COVID itself a lot of the complications with injuries complications you see in people with okay that's what's happening there this is really interesting uh, one of the things, uh, you know teach my medical students the doctors are the one to the patient 80% of your diagnosis comes through this is the basics of medical teaching listen to your patient if you do if you do the history get the diagnosis most of the time. Now, a high quality level randomized, but this is very interesting. Even in 2021, this was safe and effective, repeat alternated. They published in BM releases recently, suggest according to of what who people knew that they thought they should, or there was a the death because of the vaccine, they in the United States in 2021, then 278,000 because of the vaccine and million serious adverse events. So I've summarized saying that the serious adverse events high as one in 300. Adverse event means hospital disability life-changing event, okay? And the death one uh, could be a thousand. This is essentially replicating what we have shown all. And of course, 
Peter on this than I am, but the, in what's a mech harm, spike protein from the mRNA vaccines that we thought would harm, you know, and, and just generate anti seems, and we've got good evidence for that, gets distributed with the lip particles throughout the body and every organ system, the heart, the liver, the kidneys, the testes, there for up to four months longer. And what does either has a effect on this causes an autoimmune. So we have plausible biological as well. And then what about observational data? Levy, who I know, lead author, uh, one of the authors on this page, Israel, they looked at, because you on him in Dr. Mahotra, isn't COVID behind the heart attacks, etc. So what they did is, they did analysis in Israel, an observational study, where they found that 5% okay, in heart attack and cardiac death, people aged between 6 to 9, which was associated with the vaccine associated with COVID. It's talking about mRNA. And of course, we've got this oh, COVID shield. Now, the headlines today, we've had, well, we certainly today, um, and you can look that up if you Google. Uh, Amitav is quoted in Zara as well about COVID shield. Now, I was shocked. I, so I was so focused on the Pfizer uh, data and mRNA. It did not, now, if I wasn't aware of it, I don't know how many other people were, right? I know some people in India were. I did not know COVID shield was AstraZeneca. Until about, until about a month ago, until Barca interviewed me, I did not know the COVID shield was AstraZeneca. We've suspended AstraZeneca, the COVID, essentially the COVID shield vaccine, in, in mo all European countries. It was suspended in some as early as March, April 2021. Why? Because it was causing serious adverse eff effects, blood clots, heart attacks, and strokes. Okay? And, you know, one of the high-profile people who was a BBC presenter, um, you know, I've, I've had message exchanges with her husband. I'm just so sorry for this. Lisa Shaw, 44-year-old, and a coroner confirmed that she died because of the AstraZeneca vaccine, COVID shield, right? And, but this is the thing. I've just told you, unequivocally in my view, the Pfizer vaccine should never have been approved and the serious adverse events are unprecedented. By June 2020, peer-reviewed just COVID shield were than Pfizer. What do you do? Why did you do it? Responsible here. You need to ask these questions. Though the Indian government didn't immunity to Pfizer and AstraZeneca, I learned, vaccine manufacturers against images if vaccine is... Now, is a backed off, and we know okay, we're not going to use your vaccine in India. But AstraZeneca, we need to find out and what happened in India. Why were government authorities, medical associates, what were they doing? Did they hear analysis of AstraZeneca's heart more than all of the European countries who decided it was so bad to be suspended? Maybe, but it's not likely, is it? Something else is going on here. Something else is going on, and I will tell you three words will probably give you the answer.